inclusion um, initiative that's recently been um, getting more and more um, uh, important. Um, and we're not just talking about inclusion due to gender. We want to talk about sexual um, identity, uh, gender identity, physical illness, disabilities, race, creed, colour, whatever kind of colour you might wear in your underpants, whatever. So <laughs> I, don't want to want, I don't want to run this as a lecture or as a thing. I want it to be a workshop. I'm only here as a, as a facilitator. I want you people to get involved. That's why all the ambient microphones here in the lecture theatre are on, but only for this session, okay? That means I don't have to keep passing the microphone around. Um, as most of you are probably aware, I'm going to kick off with myself, why it's so important to me. Um, as you're probably aware, I'm a trans woman, which is something that uh, the recent Trump election <coughs> made me very, very scared about. Um, I'm also bisexual. I also have um, two invisible illnesses. I am a manic depressive, and I suffer from gout and arthritis. Um, so I tick many of the boxes that um, you know, diversity and inclusion are all about. Um, so this is why it's important to me. And I want you guys, if anyone else wants to kick off and say what, what diversity and inclusion means to them and what, what can we, as Debian, do more about it to raise its visibility, um, how to catch um, when it's um, contravened, um, maybe possibly review our, our diversity statement, um, although I think it's pretty good as it is at the moment. Um, so, does anybody else want to have to say something after I finish my verbaling? Go ahead, guys. It's up, it's up to you. This is for everyone to be involved. Okay. Well, it's interesting because Debian as a whole, if you look across the last 20 odd years, is one of the most diverse entities I can think of at this scale. And, you know, we have people of all beliefs and none. We have mostly men, too few women. We have very few physically disabled folk. We have very few visually impaired folk relative to the numbers of Debian developers, Debian maintainers. But actually, we are a good diverse community, even if sometimes we don't sound like it. We're a lot better than some of the mainstream. Oh, I, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, um... Last year um, was my first year at the, the mini-devconf since I transitioned full-time. And I was just amazed how accepting everybody was. It was fantastic. It just was a non-issue. Um, and then I'll blog about this on uh, Planet Debian later. But yeah, I, mean, I, I agree we are more diverse than the average. But I still think there's more we can do. And possibly I'd like to see more proactivism about it rather than just passive acceptance. If you see what I mean. Anybody else? Yo. Um, so, a, a lot of people here will, will, will you know, know me, and, and this is going to sound a bit odd, um, but I think that Debian is doing very badly at being inclusive to people who don't like fighting. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. I'm very conscious of this, and I try very hard to, you know, to encourage and help those people. And because I'm rather thick-skinned, and you know, being a bit older, I don't care so much what other people think. I'm more able to fight than other people are, but I still think that I'm having to fight too much. I'm having to fight too much, not so much for myself, but for <coughs> other people that I think are, you know, getting a raw deal. Um, and I don't really know what to do about that. You're entirely right. <laughs> um, there is an adversarial approach. Um, understanding your corner is how you argue something forwards. And that same approach is what is as quite right to say puts a lot of people off because they don't want to fight because then you may not have enough confidence in your own ability to stand your corner. Mm. Um, but the reason people are doing this is purely because if you don't shout, if you don't push your own agenda, nothing will happen. Mm. And we end up with a status quo. So how 
Do we get other people involved? How do we take the adversarial approach out of this? And I think this is covering the whole diversity bit that Lucy's talking about, is unless people are brave enough to stand up and say, this is an issue for me, nobody is going to pay any attention. And half the problem is <coughs> you've got to stand up and say, this is an issue for me. Um, where do we go? So I'm speaking from a position of privilege. So I'm, please tell me if I'm, what I'm about to say is you think is wrong. Um, you said that it would be a good thing to take the adversarial approach out of Debian. Um, there's a degree to which I'm not sure that's necessarily the best approach. Um, the scientific method, the Socratic method, the sort of like actually having debate to discuss what the best solutions are, I think there is virtue in that. I think there is an element to which you need to be able to argue your corner. But at the same time, what you're saying is that you're having to fight too much. Certainly, um, it, uh, conflicts can become personal and they can become deeply adversarial, uh, which is not necessarily good. I think the ideal is one where you can continue to engage in the Socratic and the scientific method, but make, do so in a place where it is safe to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Last one to say, husband? Yeah. yeah, I was going to say basically what he said, uh, but stressing the fact that there's a difference between a debate and a framework. Yes, yeah, and recognizing that is the, uh, the point where it's becoming personal is the point we've got to all stop. In fact, recognizing it's about to become personal is the point we've got to stop. I'm just going to throw out an idea here that we may be completely bonkers or not really that acceptable, but is it possibly an idea to have some kind of um, Debian um, official um, personality moderators? So basically, if something seems to be going out of line, they will take to personal messaging. Someone's saying, can you cool it down a bit? A speaker of the house or a referee? Mm, or, or something or somebody that A, people who feel they, they don't feel they can't fight themselves can go to, or if they see in a discussion something's getting out of order, they can take the people aside and say, look, calm down, guys. I mean, it's just an idea, and, and those people are publicised in some way in the arm, in the arm, arm wiki or whatever. Sorry, so, so hire some psychologist to monitor our mailing list? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what, they do. What about what? <laughs> it's, it's interesting, in fact, because I mean, I've spent what, 20 years plus on mailing lists. I've seen flame wars in Debian like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> but, but I think we're getting better. And surprisingly, I think we're getting better because we're getting used to operating at a distance via the impersonal medium of messaging and messages. <coughs> I think it's a thing you have to get used to. But yeah, when it becomes personal, then it becomes very difficult. I suppose the only thing I would like people to think, to try and remember, is that respect goes <coughs> upwards, downwards, sideways. Mm. And that sort of respect across the project works better. I'm, I'm, I don't think we're doing well on diversity at all. I think I agree. Debian is extremely straight, white, male, working men's club community. And if I look at my like employers as well, employment, in my team, um, we're all white male, and that's a team of 15 people. That's 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 not diverse. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, it's a, a problem across the entire industry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, um, one of the reasons I've been I've been pushing this recently is because I've recently been getting involved in our own internal arm diversity inclusion. Uh -huh. um, in fact, I was in one of the, the video they did recently for um, Labour of Race Day. Um, and it's the fact that we are not retaining women, the fact that a lot of people, uh, the number of people who are, um, feel safe to be out um, in, in some other way um, is limited. Um, and we're trying to improve on this. And I'm just seeing this as an extension of this person. If I'm doing it in one part of my life, I'm not doing it in other parts of my life. Mm -hmm. that's, why I'm, that's, why I was, that's why I wanted to launch this off. 
Um, but yes, I agree. I, I don't believe we are, we are representative. We, have, we tend to be more accepting, but so our inclusion is pretty good, but our diversity is pretty poor. Mm. People agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Steve? So, yeah, we keep on saying, you know, we, we have a diversity statement, we want to support diverse people. Well, absolutely. We're better than we used to be, but we're still crap. <laughs> yes, that is quite, quite bad, yeah. Um, I mean, I remember 15 years ago having discussions like this when we had three whole female developers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how many we have now. If it's well, more, more than, than that. <laughs> if it's more than 20 or 30, I'd be amazed. Out Active. of... It's, it's certainly not many, but we yeah. don't... Yeah. We don't in, New members, at least, we don't formally track it precisely sure. because it shouldn't be in yeah. And related, no, when two Debian developers help children, do they become DDs automatically? <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, related to that, uh, just looking around the room, possibly one of the thing, uh, metrics where we're not being very inclusive is getting young people in. Um, particularly if it's an adversarial relationship and you have to be able to argue your case. If you're 16 years old, then that might be an unattractive place to be. Um, so, so, something to sort of help support people and get up to speed it would be wonderful. Well, uh, I have experience trying to get someone of that age uh, to a technical related conference. And yeah. At that age, people are so self conscious that they. Uh, yes. <clears throat> even if you're extremely supportive, they, they won't go. So, uh, okay. I don't think that's necessarily a fixable problem. I'm trying to solve that problem. My daughter's come to a couple of dev cops. She's oh. not at that age yet, <laughs> and will be later. Good <laughs> <laughs> right. approach she's bring over earlier. Okay, that's a good one. She'll be here tomorrow. Sure. But uh, one, one problem I see is that, um, I mean, I don't think uh, we should be very uh, openly proactive about it. I mean, yeah. like uh, making a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I see is when something bad happens, like uh, a woman is uh, well, followed or stalked by a man, or uh, well, if somebody has a problem with your sexuality, mm -hmm. then uh, as a bystander, what can I do to, to make this better? Because if I would see something, I don't know what I should do to defuse the situation, to Make the one that is stalking or making bad comments. You uh, should use your male white privilege to call out bigotry. Yeah. Yes. Stop being wrong. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and stand up for other people. Okay. Should there be an escalation okay. process when that doesn't work? No, it's de escalation process. Yeah. You're not accusing people. The, the, the point is when it doesn't work. When it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, right. or if it continues, okay. the same, you know, potentially yeah. the same offender in, in one case or many cases, is there, a, is there a way that this is, you know, able to be taken further by a group within Debian that can potentially yeah. deal with that individual or, or group? So I see again a duality here. There's people who <laughs> need to be taught or who need to learn how to not be jerks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But most people are, uh, they would be happy to not be jerks if they're shown how not to. But there is a small group of people who need to be kicked out. Yeah. Yesterday evening, late in the evening, on the Debian Women channel, Mikey USA came back. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. he was very happy it's of the US, pre US presidential election. <laughs> but like, I don't know, personally I block people on Facebook, like I have like 35 people blocked on Facebook because I just don't want to. And then my life became happier online. <laughs> that works on a personal level. Yeah, yeah. But having an IRC channel frequency by views out hate and death threats needs to be corrected on a project level. One thing that's been suggested, that's been suggested before but never really actually happened, a lot of Debian's discussions take place on mailing lists that are not only publicly viewable, they are totally unmoderated. And this is good in one sense, it helps keep the wider community involved, but it also means that there are people who get involved on those mailing lists who I do not believe are in any reasonable sense part of the Debian project and not communicating with it. 
And it was and it come along pretty much, I think, purely to stir up arguments. Mm. You know. <clears throat> and you know, how much of the the system D flame war <laughs> was, was, was people who were actively involved in the project and how much of it was you know, do we need somewhere the project can discuss things that can't just be posted to by any random troll on the internet? Well, I mean, in Ubuntu, Ubuntu Devel was split into Ubuntu Devel for members only, and it's like basic access rights, right? And then discuss for general public, right? The net result was that, yes, the flame wars disappeared, however, the community contracted a lot as well. And, right. I, and, and, and that turned away a whole bunch of people such that the actual traffic just became dead. I mean, it, it, it may also result in just all flame wars just moving from one mailing list to a different mailing list and just stay intact. Right, initially that's what happened, but then loads of people unsubscribed and then like people disappeared like over the long right. term. Can I ask a question about how this, this experiment in Ubuntu, yeah. um, what was the situation if you were a non- <coughs> You know, a Ubuntu developer person, and you mail that mailing list. Would somebody so moderate it? it? It goes to moderation queue, and then Colin Watson. Every other fortnight, he would approve a whole bunch of messages if there were five. And you'd get whitelisted eventually. And yeah, but if you post enough, you get whitelisted by Colin. Yeah. But it all holds back to Colin or something like that. Um, I wonder. Not alone ahead for a team that already can't keep up. Yeah. In our case, yeah, it also slows down the discussion a lot. Yeah, and to be honest, these are all reactive containing measures. Yeah, it's reactive. Yeah. Like we shouldn't have this problem in the first place. Right, right. But <laughs> I mean, the, problem, the problem that the world has, but you know, for some the, the world has crappy people in it. The world's not fair. And if we set up a thing that is attractive to those crappy people, where they can do their crappy things, then they will come and do it. Mm. And uh, you could say, well, that's that's bad, but you know, if you have a, a, a solution for for dealing with that for the whole world, then yeah, <laughs> but you, you, you can't <laughs> fight yeah. social problems with technical measures. That's completely they can false. Help. They that's can completely help. false. For example, Gavin Backtracker should stop unsubscribing me because I use Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> but that's unrelated <laughs> to the topic. I was thinking about one thing to to have discussion in a more neutral environment, having more of them on via wiki, because you don't have the personality that's put forward so much, you can edit if there's anything really too offensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you still have the history, so it's not lost, but at least it's right. the, it, you, it, it, the, the thing that's displayed there, if it hasn't been edited for, uh, let's say, a day, it's probably the... It means that that's what people agree that it's, yeah. this is not bad, <laughs> even if you edit, you, you, you explicit, it's visible to everybody that it was considered not bad. And then after, when you have the discussion, you can have section about argument and people, they answer just below and uh, and then you, you don't keep repeating yourself about what, you know, you said you answer the same question and somebody ask again the same thing, so you have everything there, if it's not there you add, I don't, I don't think you can do everything this way, but when you have an idea of, so when it's an open discussion it's not going to work, but when you have an idea of, you try to reach consensus for something, Maybe uh, uh, using the wiki to, and uh, or or the wiki can be quite useful. Or yeah. Gobi, I yeah. mean, something which is not um, conversation based, but you know, just a, a shared Content medium. Based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in Wikipedia, they have long discussions about things, and uh, it's quite often that this doesn't help, you know, to, to create some consensus because, like, even then. The same arguments are repeated over and over and over again. So, um, mm. it doesn't really help, in my opinion. And it, it strikes me we're, we're all in agreement that we shouldn't be tolerating anything. We should, we should be, and we're saying, who's going to moderate it? The simple answer is, every single person has to moderate it, there and then. At the point you see something, you've got to call it out. We've got to stop being rocks and being passive ourselves. And until that happens, we're not going to create an environment where people feel safe to state their opinion mm -hmm. and beliefs and their identities uh, because of fear that they're going to be called out in some way. And so we've got to, you know, if, if I'm out of order, stop me now. Don't wait a week. 
and bitch that Andy's been a bit, bit of a dick out there and, and have, a, have a moan. At the point I start to be a dick, stop me. And that should apply to every single person. But again, we're talking about reactive. What can we do to be more proactive and get more people involved? Sorry. Um, I just wanted to say I've ended up in a couple of Debbie and Devil discussions uh, <laughs> and on the front page of Hacker News and Start Dot. Um, and the Debbie and Devil discussion was going on, there was lots of personal attacks, and it was Ian Jackson stepped in and a couple of other developers stepped in and they, they defended me and it was because I'd seen that there were people that were going, no, what are you doing, this is, this is wrong, don't do this. I knew that that wasn't the overall view of the community and just seeing something happening made everything a lot better. This is going back to the concept I was talking about of the personality moderators. Yeah. And as I said, sometimes you, you, you may be wanting to say something, but you don't feel you can't. And yeah. that's because that's a silent thing. People aren't going to know that you did want to say something, which is why you need people to be, you can approach and say, this is what I say, this is why I don't feel I can say it. Yo. So, uh, <clears throat> how can you try to be proactive with diversity? I think that's one of, I mean, we're already in agreement that we should be more diverse. Uh, what can we do to fix that? Uh, in Debian, we have an outreach team uh, which runs, well, participates in uh, internship programs. Uh, so Google Summer of Code, uh, Outreachy, uh, that are programs that try to involve new people in our community. Mm -hmm. um, we are struggling with finding good projects and good mentors to guide those interns uh, in the project. Uh, we are also trying to do diversity bursaries for DevConf, so bringing new people uh, into those conferences. Um, we need, I guess, help to do that. Uh, yes. Where do we sign up? Sorry? Where do we sign up to help? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a Debian outreach mailing list um, where we send announcements about programs. Uh, we can talk and uh, add more people to the outreach areas, I guess. Um, and yeah, if you have ideas of what we can, what we should do, uh, then you can speak up. What's the first port of call for any new person to the Debian project? Uh, there is a welcome team. Uh, I'm not part of it. No, uh, I mean, when someone says, here's the Debian, they want to find out about it, where's the first place they go? Front page. Yes. We need something linked, we should we need something linked off the left, if not either mentioned on the front page or linked off the front page that uh, indicates us to diversity. Because I, I had difficulty finding my diversity page a couple of days ago <laughs> in preparation for this spot. Right. <coughs> so it, it, it's the information, some of the information is there, but it's not immediately visible, it's silent. <coughs> and that's where we need to increase our visibility and say, look, we want, you know, we are inclusive of these things, yeah. come and join us. I don't know, I always view Debian as a social project rather than a technical one. Ah, that's a mixture of both. Yo, how is that relevant? Yeah. Because our front page is all about how to download the ISO. <laughs> so the Debian.org, in your opinion, is directly technical rather than social? Yes. yes. It should be both. So yeah, yeah, we need to fix that. Yeah. That's, not, that's not quite. That, that's quite a sweeping assessment. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm exaggerating. There's really some evil stuff on there as well. But it should I acknowledge it's smaller than all the technical. Yeah. 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 yeah, there should be something there at least. Yeah. The, the text is like this disc, which is like. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a number of, of books open on www.debian.org. Um, the problems that I think we have and we talked about in uh, Vienna. Um, if you wanted to get started with packaging, you have no hope. For <laughs> you have literally no hope. We tried to uh, organize the wiki pages and there was, there was no easy way to get started. So I think we are closed to new people unless you already know someone that can help you get started. Um, the, the downloading of ISOs is entirely done badly and Steve has a bug on that. 
and the blends pages were all listed under the developers section, even though that was user documentation. So I moved those out, but there is a lot of work to be done on the, the website, and I think the first step for that is filing bugs with ideas of how to uh, reorganize this, and but there really does need to be a project for does, that. Does anybody here even look at the R front page or use it for anything? Because like I go to tracker.debian.org, that's the only URL. I, I can never remember the like categorization of the URL, so I have to not URL hack because I always end up at some 404. So I have to go by the front page, and it's madness. <laughs> <laughs> and this can never find anything. Speaking of packaging, I remember back in the days when I didn't know how to create the packages, and one, well, basically it was just uh, I knew how how the dev packages made up what's inside of it, but I didn't know how to create ones except as create Debian capital directory and just pack it into a tar, tar and so on. And I remember that I learned how to do that definitely not through Debian.org, but I yeah, I knew someone who who knew how to create Debian packages, use a dev helper, and they gave me like a long Debian rule script, like a hundred lines or something, and I started hacking on that and just trying things out. And it, well, these days it's slightly better, but I still I don't know what page to point people at when, well, probably something at the wiki, but no idea, actually. Is it slightly better, or are you just more familiar with what needs to be done? I'm not... I mean, when, when I'm trying to find uh, a specification of multi-arch, it's like, it points me to Ubuntu <laughs> wiki, but yes, not to Debian wiki. Yes, that's the canonical because, location. Yeah, and then <laughs> when I tried, I, I tried to learn how to use Debian, the dev triggers, Last week, uh, well, I, you read I, I package left. source code. Sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I later I learned that I don't actually need triggers for that package. I can do it differently. Oh, okay. I did it differently. I didn't use triggers at the end. Okay. But, I mean, it was it was I actually I went to an internal collaborator wiki, uh, not wiki, sorry, uh, resource. I downloaded another package, internal collaborator package, which used triggers. Can I interrupt you here a moment and say a lot? We seem to be getting derailed into a discussion of um, our technical deficiencies <laughs> with our technical yeah. documentation, and I'm sure all of us are aware of deficiencies in our technical documentation. And I'm not sure that as part of an outreach effort yes, is quite awesome. the right framing yeah. for for that. It's one of many things we need to improve. Yeah. But the very very first thing people see, as Lucy said, is way below par. But this is, I think, actually quite a good point because we are getting lost ourselves <laughs> and getting sidetracked off the issue, which is you know, how, to, how do we proactively encourage diversity? And we seem to be, we seem as a group to be spiralling down the um, technocracy again. We seem to be well, fixated on, it, so we're, we're fixated on the technical, and um, how do we break that fixation? Well, we're technical people. <laughs> so how do we get people who are not technical? Andy? I'm going to say something very controversial here. Okay, so be aware there's somebody at the back of the room you can throw things at. Okay. I'm physically disabled. I'm also what you might call neurodiverse. If I'm feeling bloody-minded, I just sound brain-damaged. There are a lot of people around me in Debian and also elsewhere, who are on the autistic spectrum somewhere, who are technical types, who are, you know, we all tend to be the focused, um, technical, dealing with technical stuff is sometimes a lot easier than dealing with people. We are the wrong people to be trying to pull people in. And in fact, my other half was here last year, she sat in the kitchen and she said, God, if you went to Central Castle and asked for geeks, this is what you'd get. Um, I don't know that we are good at going to be able to get more diverse people in. But what we are good at is other aspects of diversity. We are good at allowing people to be themselves in terms of gender, sexuality, sexual expression, that kind of stuff. Um, which other parts of the world just generally aren't. Yeah. I mean, it's not for nothing that we had 
presentation last year on what? BDSM and Debian and then Marika? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wonder if we can learn something from one of the other major geek communities, which is the sci-fi fantasy fandom, which are, have a very, very wide diversity and have no problems attracting people. Maybe, I mean, the fact we're geeks should preclude us from being able to be social. Yeah, I agree. And, I mean, Debian does attract weird people, and I once said that, by definition, to become a DD, being weird is a requirement. But, <laughs> but you know, why stop there? <laughs> We can do more. So. What include normal people? How do you define normal again? Standing off straight. Everybody. Yeah, one thing I've just been kicking around on the Debian website. I've been kicking around on the Debian website, and basically there's only one image there, and that's the Debian logo. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's, that's on purpose. I don't say <laughs> you should make it like Ubuntu's website, uh, <laughs> but there is some room, I think, for some people with a laptop, or it doesn't have to be stock uh, photo. Well, on a Ubuntu website, we have a lot of group photos from like conferences and things. Yeah. Like, can we put a picture from DevConf? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Like, we are. People make that white supremacy. Exactly. Join us. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very impersonal. Of course, it's nice for a big shopping <coughs> time, but... Uh... What about a selected few bios, with, possibly with pictures, from people saying what Debian means to them, and can get as wide a selection of people as possible? No. How about the, what, the We Are Debian? And literally just small bits and pieces. You know, the, the, you've seen quite a lot of the advertising campaigns. The bios don't necessarily need to put stuff behind, but a photo. Random photo of every DD, if they're happy to have it on the front page. Picks a random photo. Show the diversity we've got so we, yes, we're probably going to need to positively bias this. Um, but show the diversity, and in, um, by showing what little diversity we've got, but stressing it more frequently, we've got, uh, making a safe, no, safe is the wrong word, a place where people are comfortable to be themselves. Welcoming? Yeah, welcoming. Um, and put that front and centre. Um, yeah, ultimately, I would hope, and I think most all of us in this room would, would say, we try to leave our prejudice at the door. I think most of us are happy to be to recognise that we have prejudice mm. and have it called out on us when. We cross a line, and unless everybody else is prepared to do the same to us, then we can't be welcoming to anybody else because we're not creating an environment there people feel happy and safe in the first place. Of course, a lot of problem is a lot of bias is unconscious. Oh, very much unconscious, and that's what we've got to overcome. So we've got to actively overcome it. Um, would anybody? here genuinely be upset if we put their photos on the front page. Uh, mm. See also celebra.com? Well, quite. Not to say, <laughs> mo modulo scaring people away with my own. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that for years and it doesn't seem to have had a major problem. <laughs> David? Um, sorry, I just had my fax match, so I need to page back in. Um, so, so you were saying something along the lines of um, unconscious biases and wanting to sort of like see that corrected. Um, I have certainly discovered that I've been exhibiting this myself in the past, and people have told me that this is a thing, and I've gone, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Um, being able to do that in a public forum and to be able to sort of set a good example as to what good behaviour looks like, um, I think might also have some value. Um, I think there's lots of people who are already trying to do this already. I don't know if there's anything that could be added there as well. Meeting in real life really does help. Massively. Every swap. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Steve? So I've heard quite a number of good ideas, a lot of which are going, are going to need some technical work to make them happen. There is a next obvious question, who wants to help? Me? 
Yeah. So what, we should take a picture of DPL and put a face on the front page with a quote, right? Action item. It's a start. <laughs> um, and to say we are a social project. Yes, we have an operating system, yeah, yeah. but we have sure. a social project Absolutely. as well. So, you know, we, we've already suggested several improvements we could make to our websites and various other things. Yeah. And a lot of the problems that we have in those areas are not that people don't agree with those ideas, it's just, you know, it's, it's finite uh, effort, you know, and we have a limited number of people who have been able to find the time to do what, what is already necessary and what we know is needed technically. We need, again, we will need more help to do this kind of thing. Um, I, I would object to raising the DPL as the, uh, the, the one person to stick on the front page. Please don't do that. All <laughs> more people in Debian than just yeah. stick. And we'll never talk like DPL again ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm also there. Uh, how are you? Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I need to refresh to get new people. Yeah. So, yeah, if people want to help with this and, and actually get involved technically to do it, that doesn't mean editing WML, but it, it will mean <laughs> writing content, it will mean getting some stuff done. So we can go forward with that, we can make it happen. But it is going to need some effort. I'll volunteer to write WML if someone decides. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. Ditto. I, will, I yeah. will do that for people if they need it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy, to, I'm happy to produce content, as you're probably well aware. Oh, oh yeah. Um, there's nothing in the social contract about diversity. That's an interesting point. It doesn't have to be. So there isn't. We did make, you know, we had a public vote, and we made a diversity statement a few years ago. You know, we have made a very loud public statement about the, the values of the project in a similar fashion to what we did with the social contract. Mm. Um, yeah. Do you think it would help if it was, there was something about that in a modified social contract? Yes, because then it would be obviously central. Yeah. At, at, at least port the statement in the DFSG about not discriminating against mm. in software licenses against anybody. Yeah. I actually, I'm not sure that that would help, given the rows that have been over the social contract before. Um, in all seriousness, we promote Debian as the universal operating system. We promote it as something for everybody. Rather than putting it into our technical documentation, we're better to live it, put it on the website, explain it, live it in conferences like this, I don't think we need to add it to every piece of technical documentation, provided we can live the culture. Mm. So Although, is, the, is the social contract a piece of technical documentation? That's kind of an interesting. Yeah. That's the thing. I think it's the society issue. Issue. I don't think and, is. If you want to go and push that, you'll have my vote, but I don't think it's important. Mm. Some, well, something that might help is yeah. having uh, showing these things, not modifying them, but showing them on the same page. Right. The DFSG is appended to the social contract. Yeah. Add yeah. the uh, diversity statement there and anything else that's relevant, and if you can find them in one place. Right, we need to wrap this up in the next few minutes. So, has anyone else got any other points they want to raise at this point? Um, please make sure the points that have been raised are in the Gobby Dot, which appears to have run out of steam. Right? One last thing, sorry. Yeah. Um, it comes into social stuff. Accessibility software, things like Dasha, things like anything you need to do when you're blind or you've only got one arm or all that kind of stuff, is at least as important in some ways as some of the other diversity stuff. Because otherwise, we will be excluding groups. Mm. Yeah, I think that's quite valid. I think that needs to be considered if we make any changes to the website because at the moment it's lovely for screen readers and we'll take that away and make it all HTML5. If we, if we make the website all HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, Flash, nonsense, we're going to no, no, no. ruin screen readers. No, we can improve the website whilst remaining its current standard for accessibility mm -hmm. because the standard accessibility for Debian website is like better than everything else out there. <laughs> it's like amazing. <laughs> so there are constraints, 
of what we can do. Yeah, nice. that's well known. Is Debian a universal operating system or is it a global social project? An yes. experiment? Both. Both. Yeah. And I think you are curious. But it does not state, state that. <laughs> but it does not state page. that. So, yeah. so, it, so the first place I would say the first thing people look at is here's a load of technical stuff about Debian. We have this many packages. We have, you know, here's how to download. <laughs> there is nothing to say. Debian is also a big diverse project. You could join it. It's a social project? Yeah. Any other different um, um, opinions or uh, well, things to raise before we run out of time? Because well, I think we've done this bit to death now. Mm. Yeah. Maybe one question. Yeah. Uh, with diversity, uh, do we want to reach uh, or express that we are diverse to our users or our developers? Is there a priority between the two? I mean, I think it would go from user to <coughs> developer. Well, it's a bit blurred anyway. Oh. If we're a social project, everybody's included, and that includes the users, the developers, because that's the point of a social group. Yes. But it's a big, huge social group. It's yes. a social network. I run Debian. <laughs> yeah. Right, I think we can wrap it up about there then. Thank you very, very much for all of you for um, taking part. Um, thank, this thank, is you. Well, thank you. Thank you for pushing this as well.